Hello, everybody. Today is January 3rd, 2024. Happy New Year. I don't think I've recorded anything this year. Maybe I have. I don't know. I just put this stuff on my phone. I date it. Then I upload it to my computer. And then I'm going to slowly release it one at a day. So sometimes I do multiples. Sometimes I do one. I got a 45 minute drive. To an appointment. So I figured I'd record a little something. That I've been thinking about. I did get today studio equipment so I already have ha I've had the camera and the recording and the m microphone I've had like you know over two grand worth of equipment including a computer it's probably closer to five of stuff that I just haven't set up and today I got like all the little pieces like mounts and stuff so I can organize the area so that I can just hit a couple buttons and record something and and, and do these with better sound quality same, it'll be the same channel, the same ugly mug, the same energy, but it'll be clean sound in the background. Maybe more distractions, which might not be good. But anyways, the topic, the topic for today, it's on hand. I was thinking about drug use with individuals and how they self-medicate and I think one of the issues with the idea of self-medicating is the fact that it's medicating at all. So it's not about doctor medicated versus self-medicated. So it's such a weird term, the term self-medicated. It seems like propaganda to me by people that are selling drugs or pit or therapists that are actually just drug dealers posing it's like you, you got to keep your ear and your mind open to the words that they use you know, I grew up on a lot of hip-hop and you know people are like oh my god Tupac was so so smart and it's like I mean if you just look around you you figure it out it's like yeah you know Tupac's running away from gangs and he's running away from police. So he's just like, oh, the police are just a gang. They're just well organized and accepted. So if you say the answer to your, oh, you're sad, take drugs. Then people are like, I thought you said drugs aren't the answer. And it's like, well, yeah, all the drugs that you can get on the street aren't the answer. But the centralized drugs, we're going to call those medication medication is good drugs because we say so we get a cut of it we own own this so if you have anxiety or have you or you have depression then the, the medication is, is not the solution because 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 so the idea of even a chemical imbalance is a half-truth. Michael Malice would say, what does he say? It's factual but not truthful? Or is it truthful but not factful? Factual? I don't know, I'm an idiot. Anyways, the idea being that you do have a chemical system within your body. And you need particular chemicals to create certain things, such as cortisol to get you up in the morning, adrenaline to get you out of danger, to enjoy something, like or to put your energy into focus uh, when you're an athlete, or if you're about to get hit by a car, or if you're running from an animal, or a person, or an animal they call a person. <laughs> I'll let your mind wander. And you need dopamine, and you need serotonin, you need these circulating through your body. And you need testosterone, and you need estrogen, or estradiol. And they, they have to work in an ecosystem within your body. And if you're not creating them properly, or even if you're substituting them, then you are creating uh, a 
new dependence on a new chemical. And like any drug that you're missing in your body, so like if you're missing a drug in your body or a chemical in your body, right, that you're dependent on, your body's not producing it. You, you need a little, then you need more and more and more. So if you give yourself a drug, you're going to need more and more and more, and it's not going to work. It's just a band-aid to a bigger problem. So a lot of this stuff, the first thing that you would have to do is put some work into your health. And you don't have to become a super athlete. But if your car was like, so for instance, your car, you're driving down the highway on your car and you start getting an antifreeze leak in your car. I don't know if you people know cars, but you can have leaks. The antifreeze cools the car, it cools the engine, it goes through the radiator and through the engine block and it's getting cooled in the radiator back through the engine block, cooling that off so that your car doesn't overheat. And if it gets too much pressure and build up, you can get um, an injury in that, that flow system. A valve could be open, a valve could be closed, it causes some pressure, it causes a crack or a seal or something. Now, before you can go get a mechanic to replace that, if you're stuck somewhere, you can pop into some places and buy uh, a fluid that you pour into the tank and start it up, and then it, it'll fill that gap as a temporary gap to get those flowing again. But in your mind, you wouldn't be like, well, that's fixed now. I put that thing in there that instead of it being <laughs> solid metal, it's got some gum in it that I poured in there, and now it's all fixed. And in fact, some mechanics will say, no, you caused an even bigger problem because now I gotta clean all that gunk out of there and fix the original problem. So when you're taking drugs, medication falling all under this stuff, a new chemical compound within your body, you're putting a Band-Aid on one of these injuries. So like I said, go back. The first thing you wanna start doing is health. And I would suggest physical. It's just physical, physical, physical. The mental, the, 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 the mind, the body, and the soul are not three separate entities. The mind is the body, is the essence, is the soul. So the, the body and the mind are not separated. If your body's not healthy, that means your mind's not healthy. It's not two separate things. It's your brain is a physical thing with, with impulses. It needs, it needs fuel and energy and, and water and, and nutrients and minerals just like like the rest of your body so you have to be taking in the right stuff and not and, and ignoring the negative stuff so once you're eating better and supplementing the things that you're missing and exercising and sweating out the, the toxins that you get with some of your your foods and you're cleaning your foods and stuff I would start a health journal a food journal to see what I'm taking in and see what certain foods make react to my body tiredness is a is a emotion sleepiness and tiredness it's a chemical reaction that's a, an emotion it's not uh, a physical thing because you can work through tiredness so for example when you're tired a lot of people will drink a coffee for example and the coffee's not waking you up it's closing receptors that receive the chemicals that make you feel the emotion of tiredness and then you can push through and your body keeps pushing through so it's not like you fall asleep after you've taken coffee. Now you can build up tolerances and stuff, but I'm saying when you take a stimulant, there's a lot of times that stimulant, it's not necessarily stimulating you, but it's closing off the receptors that feed that, those receptors a chemical that tells you that you're tired. So you wanna balance your body in a way that you're eating things, that you're not eating so much garbage all the time so that when you eat something that makes you feel a certain way, you can recognize that and stop taking that in. Now, there is gonna be a window where your energy and blood flow switches into your stomach via to digestion. That's why it's important not to eat so close to bed because then instead of your body focusing on sleeping, resting, repairing, or recovery, it's gonna be focusing on digestion on a large part of the night. Um, 
four and can focus on the rest. But as you start eating better, you're still going to have past traumas, experiences, uh, lack of coping skills, lack of negotiation skills, a whole bunch of other stuff that are thoughts in your head that are hard to control when you're on chemicals of any sort, whether they're self-medicated or other people medicated. It's like, you know, oh, I'm not self-medicated. I get my weed from a dealer. <laughs> it's like, you know, oh, I'm not self-medicated. I get my Zola from Big Pharmaceutical. It's just magic words, so remember that. You make you make all the stuff that you need. Your body makes everything that you need. With the exception of some things where there's problems like insulin and whatever, whatever. You can actually so here's the here's the differences, right? If you have diabetes type one, born with it, where you're having a, a problem either creating or receiving insulin, and most likely creating it, where diabetes 2 is clogged receptors that can't receive the insulin. You can, you can take a test, you can take blood work, you can, you can look at somebody's uh, pancreas, and you can test this out before and after. But when they give, when they look at these brain scans, they can see a difference afterwards, but they're not saying like, oh, here's what it looks like before, here's what's wrong, take the drug, here's what's right. There is no before and after with these self-medicated stuff. So the scary part, and this is, this is basically what you need like a therapist for, or a friend, or a support group. I've done it by myself. And, and this is this is a tale older than time. This is nothing new. What I'm about to tell you. So there's a story of Kratos from God of War, right? This would be a good story for me, right? So Kratos in the, the the mythology of the video game, he and this and this is the same story of Shawshank Redemption with uh, with Andy is. Kratos goes down to Hades, which is, you know, pretty much where bad people go. It's hell. But he falls down all the way to the bottom level to rescue somebody. And then he has to crawl back all the way back up to the top and defeat all these demons and monsters all the way back up till, till he gets his freedom and he earns his freedom and he's back in reality. And that changes him. But he survives and now he has all the skills from fighting all those monsters and demons on the way out. And so he's better off after the fact. But he had to go down there. Really who he ended up rescuing when he went to the 80s and back with himself. Now if you've seen the Shawshank Redemption, it's about this guy that gets falsely imprisoned in jail. He ends up escaping and crawling through a long shit of tunnels. It's literally a sewer pipe. He's covered in shit and fecal matter and piss from a prison. He crawls out the other side and in the scene they have rain that washes him clean. So he crawls through a mile of shit and comes out clean on the other side. He comes free to, but in order for him, so in the movie, Andy looks as if he's the good guy. They don't tell the beginning part of the story, but he catches his wife cheating on him, and he supposedly leaves. Spoiler alert, this movie's 20 years old. But he was drinking at the scene, and he drops the bottle and it breaks. So they don't go into more of the story, but you can kind of see he was probably a drunk. He was probably ignore, like ignoring his wife and causing other problems in his life. And not that he deserved to go to be cheated on or go to prison, but it's not like he was perfect and then his wife cheated on him. They were both causing issues and perfect and the marriage was failing for uh, like other reasons. So, so prison was his hell 
and he had to fight the monsters and demons and learn his way and he learned to he, he made friends he negotiated he embraced his ability to, to, to have certain skills he crawled through shit and then it rains and he comes out clean on the other side so once you are healthy and physical and, and eating properly and managing this stuff then you're ready to fight in your battle and your war and you maybe you want to get a comrade or some comrades that have gone before and done this before such as a therapist that's not trying to give you drugs or friends or a support group that have done it themselves somebody but you have to fall drugs why do they say drugs get you high they pull you up because they're making you hover over those levels of hell you're high and you have to fall. You have to fall all the way to the bottom. And when they say hit rock bottom, why is this something that always goes, you know, gets talked about being at rock bottom? Why do you have to hit rock bottom before you come back? Now, the idea of rock bottom, a lot of people think is, oh, you gotta do drugs and alcohol and everything until you fuck it up so much that you either die or say you gotta turn it around. Or, you can choose to go to rock bottom and say, fuck it, I'm getting off the weed, I'm getting off the alcohol, I'm getting off these medications and these drugs and stuff with help and support and, like I said, with uh, support groups and therapists and, and maybe you need some help so with withdrawals and stuff like that to fall into the bottoms, the depths of your mind and as that anxiety starts rising, those are the demons and the voices that are talking to you and the monsters that you need to defeat. This, the, the, the idea, like, really, one thing that really bothers me with, with Sam Harris, and he's finally getting exposed on some different levels, but meditation is not learning to ignore the voices. Meditation is learning to listen to those voices and clean them up and discover why you're having those voices. It's your subconscious that's like, well, you're not, you're not doing the right thing. You're not doing yourself. You're not listening to the dreams. So I'm going to bother you in your waking hours now. So to learn to disconnect from that is like learning to... Uh, you, you're basically getting free information of how to solve your problems and you're being taught to, to not listen. Now you got to be careful because there's all sorts of negative voices in the air and once you go and you fight these demons and your monsters and stuff, what, you, what you're trying to do is find your voice among all the noise so that you're calm you're having a conversation, in a relationship with yourself and yourself only. Not all the past people that are yelling at you, giving you trauma, the demons and the monsters, and the people that you run into. Now, some people call these deep the, the reason the analogy of these demons and, some, and people have God is because when you're out of it, it's like having a relationship with peace and God or with tranquility in yourself. You find that voice in your head that you don't know where it comes from. Now, I don't, I'm not going to get into this. I've made some other videos now. If you don't have an inner monologue and you're listening to it, that's fine too. Your, this will work with your, um, with your visual thought process. So if you internalize stuff through images, then you're going to be seeing some scary and deep vivid images. Those are your subconscious giving you information that you have to work through and, and interpret and then turn them into better images or map out what they're trying to explain to you, whatever you think. And if you feel, if you don't have an internal monologue that's verbal or visual, it's more of an emotional thing, then you're going to have to do the same thing with these emotions that arise, whether it be anxiety or stress or whatever, and see where they're coming from and, and, and start pairing them up with the situations that you're in that you're ignoring. So let me give you an example of one of the the meditations that I did for a long time, and I still do from time to time to clean up. Most days, 
I'm doing one meditation now. And it's before I go to bed, maybe I do it twice a day, but definitely before I go to bed, I lay down and I just give gratitude and grace for everything positive that's going on because everything is just so amazing and clean. And like if you look for things that are good in your life, good that you're working towards you'll constantly see good and your life will improve and you'll have better things your mind can only hold so much information so if you choose to focus on only the good you can program it to see more good and chase more good it's not magic it's it's the limitations of you or, or of your conscious mind versus your subconscious mind so if you just program the pilot of your or your mind that goes out there to see the good and stuff not to be naive not to ignore negative signs and red flags but to spot positivity good goals and search towards that so if every night before I go to bed I do a couple things I usually envision some of the stuff that I'm working on and how well it's going to work out and then you could call it praying or whatever I don't know who I'm talking to, but I just give thanks for everything that's going on. But leading up to that, I used to do a meditation in the afternoon, or you can do three of them, but we'll go through the first one of the day that I used to do, which was a listening meditation. So at night, I'm doing a, a talking meditation and a thanks meditation. But in the morning, I would do a listening meditation. And a lot of people say, oh, I can't meditate. When I meditate, I have all these thoughts or whatever, and I can't get quiet. Yeah, that's meditating. You're doing it. You're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it. If you're sitting there, right, you're not, it's not supposed to be quiet. It's not supposed to be ignoring the voices. People that are telling you that are, are setting you up for failure. It's going to be noisy, confusing when you first start, uncomfortable, unsettling. You're not going to understand it. You're not going to have any stimuli but yourself. You're going to be stuck with your thoughts. And you got to fall to the bottom. You have to go through all those demons. And if you haven't done this, there's going to be a hell of a lot of demons that you got to fight that you went through. But you have to listen to them. Figure out their weaknesses and figure out how to defeat them. So I used to get a notebook. And then I would sit there in the morning and I would try to sit like Indian style and I'm like, okay, time to meditate. And I, you can use your phone with a notepad or a handwritten notebook or whatever, whichever best for you. I like to write it down because when I write it down, I get to write it and see it and understand it. If I put it in my phone, it's similar and you can pick it up earlier, but it's like, it's not kinetic when you're not connect to it in reality so if you think about it and then you physically form it into reality on a piece of paper you're giving it substance you're bringing it into this realm so that you can defeat it that's how I feel and your mind kind of remembers it kinetically but you might just be able to do it without that so I'm sitting there and picture you're just sitting there and you're trying to sit Indian style you're like man I can't sit Indian style my legs hurt, my quads hurt, my lower back hurts. Dave's an idiot. This this doesn't work. <sighs> I can't meditate. I gotta stand up. Now my foot hurts. All right, I'll sit down. I can't do my knees. And it's like oh, I, I, I'm not getting any information here. What, what, what is this meditation? It's like okay, you just did it. You just for five minutes you meditated. And what did you learn? Maybe it was only a minute. Maybe it was two minutes. What did you learn? What did you learn? You learned that you couldn't sit down. Why couldn't you sit down? Because your legs hurt. What hurt about your legs? Your legs and your lower back. Why did your legs and your lower back hurt? Are you out of shape, physically? Are you tense? Are you not stretching? Are, you, are your muscles tight? Is your lower back tight? Are your legs tight from sitting at your job all day? Do you drive for a living? Do you sit at a desk? Do you not work out? Do you not stretch? Do you not exercise? Do you not hydrated? See? There's a language. You're, t you're learning to talk to yourself. Alright? So your body, your leg can't say, Hey, I need to be stretched and hydrated. And worked out. Right? That's how you talk. But your leg can say, 
when you're trying to sit there and 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 meditate. So it's communicating to you. So now you, you go back a couple weeks and you're doing this five minutes of sitting there and you, you've been doing 10, 20 minutes of stretching and you've you've started to hydrate better and you've started to strengthen and stretch your lower back. And you sit there again and you're like, okay, let's meditate. And it's like I can't concentrate because my stomach it's all sweaty. It keeps sitting against my leg. Ah, it's so hot in here. Ah, it's too hot in here. I can't meditate. I gotta go outside. Ah, now, now I'm cold, and all I can feel is my cold, my cold stomach sitting on my leg. And it's like, ah, Dave's an idiot. And he's like, okay. What did you just learn now? Maybe you have some excess fat that's in your mind all the time. So as you sit there, you're conscious of your body. And it's telling you that you have excess fat, that it would feel more comfortable if you got rid of it. Now, you do this over and over again, and the little stuff will disappear. Then you'll start sitting, laying down, and you'll say, okay, I'm sitting here, I feel good, my body feels good, I think I'm meditating, but I gotta, I gotta pay that bill when I'm done with this. But I don't have money for that bill. What, what, no, hey, meditate. My body's in shape now. I can meditate. Stop worrying about the bills. Stop worrying about the money for the bills. That's anxiety. This isn't time for anxiety like that. This is time to meditate. But I don't know if I'm going to have enough for the electric and the thing. And it's like, ah, oh, Dave's an idiot again. And it's like, no. See, now you're getting deeper. And you're finding more monsters. Now, this, this is a message that your finances need to be dealt with in a particular way and that, that that's eating on you every one of these little things that happens and it'll go more and more and more and you're getting samples you're, it's coming to the surface now the solutions and what you have to do is going to be the difficulty of it but once you know what's really nagging at you you can attack it and you can write it down and you can you can come up with a plan if you're overextended then how are you going to make more money or how are you going to reduce what you're spending or how are you going to network with people to make more money what where is the solution how are you going to figure it out and i and if you can do this if you can sit down every day you'll eventually climb up all the different levels of the stuff that's bothering you and you'll get to a point where you'll sit down like when I sit down and I do this meditation in the morning, I'm just like, and it's just quiet. And I'm like, oh, good morning. And I'm like, good morning. This feels good. And then this is the third type of meditation that I do. I have a check-in with myself. Once your mind and your body and your essence now are, are calm, connected and re-put together these three things that work in symphony it's not the mind and the body and the soul it's mind, body, soul mind, body, essence, it's not and or war, it's all one connected you can do a check in with yourself just like you were catching up with an old friend and I can just sit down and say hey, good morning, how are you today I'm like, good I slept okay but I could do better and I think tonight we got to get to bed a little bit more earlier and have some have some uh, more water, just keep hydrated, eat a little bit better. Yeah, I can see that. How's work? Work's good. I want to do A, B, C, and D. How about you? Good. How about how about your relationship? Is there anything you need to work on? Yeah, I think you know things have been tough with this, so I think I need to do this. And you just check in. And now you're you're caught up. It's kind of like when you clean your whole house or Jordan Peterson when he's like, clean your room. Once it's clean, if you keep up on it, it's very easy. Once the demons are slayed, you know, once you once the whole dungeon is empty, if it respawns, you just got a couple to get rid of. And now you have the tools, the weapons, and the skills to defeat those demons because you put the time and the work and the effort into it. And it's not going to be over, you know? You don't go from like uh, like it, it, it's a constant thing. It's like cleaning your house, working on your car, exercising, 
it's a journey and, and you figure out what parts of the journey you like and what's good for you and your health and your diet and your exercise and what works best for you and you make a list of it and you keep doing that and you don't try to go from oh I'm bad and then I'm fixed that I don't need to do this anymore you go from I don't do this to this is an important part of my life and I'm important and if I want to enjoy my life I need to take care of myself and if I don't take care of myself I can't take care of my loved ones I can't take care of my family I can't take care of my community I can't take care of my larger community and I can't take care of so on and so forth so I'm gonna end it here I hope this is some food for thought for you I'm really interested in your thoughts I've released by this time when I'm recording this I've uploaded four blogs three of them are on my main social media which is rumble YouTube and X and the fourth one is always released a day early on BitChute and my website if you like to read a little bit about what I recorded before you watch it then you go to my website and I have a blog about what I wrote it's very simple it's four or five paragraphs about conversations like this if you go into my website it's all categorized so if there's stuff that's more important to you than others you can categorize through it if you go to YouTube I've got playlists set up I've got playlists set up on uh, rumble as well on if you go to my X account it's gonna be on the highlights tab you're gonna see all the videos highlighted on X and I'll have one a day hopefully for 365 days or maybe it's 366 this year with February 29th for the year of uh, our Lord and Savior 2024 um, but I hope this helped uh, like I said if you want to get there early get on BitChute it's a true free speech platform uh, if you'd like to help or support I have tabs on my website where I can when you can donate crypto if you want to keep this project going it's 100% decentralized philosophy for everybody or if you don't have uh, if you don't want to financially support please share this with somebody that you think would be helpful please share my channels my videos like sub subscribe all that stuff and I, I just have a feeling that by the time I rewatch this and probably a hundred days from now that my channel is going to be on a, on a, up, a huge up, up trend because I think this is some important stuff for people so all right love you guys peace